Okay, today is going to be a different video showing you how I edit a graphic. It won't be a perfect uh, uh, tutorial, but I will at least give you the basics of how I edit a graphic here. Um, you can see this uh, 45 WBFF TV Baltimore Technical Difficulties. That's very easily done um, by uh, going to YouTube. And if you see a picture you like, you just hit the Windows and the Print screen. And that gives you a saved image. And then uh, you can um, go to that direct folder if you know where to look. And you go and edit that copy through some sort of paint program. So you import that into a paint program. You can edit that if you want to. So it's very easy for me to do um, graphics that way. Uh, standalone graphic. Now, um, the difficult thing is getting it to be animated. And that's wherein lies the difficulty for some people because you have to purchase usually some fancy program to do that. And each program has its own peculiarities and, um, and that's why people have so many editing programs. Uh, the ones I'm familiar with is Paint. You know, you can do some basic editing. You can draw a line through it or box or you know, embellish the graphics and throw some text on something. And that's the easiest way to create your uh, logo for your, um, for me for your channel. Um, you don't necessarily need to go through the YouTube editor. I'm not sure how that still works or if they even have that. Um, my earlier videos, I, I'm not exactly sure how I did that. But um, but then I got something called Photo Stage Slideshow Viewer. Um, this was an Australian program. I really enjoyed it. And then I had to upgrade it a few times for a few extra dollars. Something happened to each program and I'm not sure why. Somehow it stopped working, and the program I don't think stopped working, but several other computer systems stopped supporting it. But I don't need any other further support or additions to this program right now, and so I don't have to pay anything at the moment. It's, it's, I mean, I own the program. Um, but, you know, I found workarounds of how to upload my graphics to YouTube. So I can always save them as different files and upload them through different mediums if I have to. So what I usually do, so let's start doing a graphic here. So in my current video project I'm working on, I'm doing, that. you saw in the previous video about my record haul, um, I use something called the Zooming HB from Hanna-Barbera. But I wanted to do the Henry S, HS. And so I follow the logo carefully, so what we do is go to YouTube. And I have the Zooming HB open here. So hopefully we can... So very 1970s there. Very quick, you know, four, oops, four second logo there. A Hanna-Barbera production. Now I copied the H and did everything like that, so forth and so forth. And, but I did not have an S. So I just made what I thought looked like an S or the closest thing. Um, but then eventually I just said, you know what, let's just type in Hanna-Barbera zooming HB font. And there were numerous people that directed you to the different fonts that were identical or similar to that. And I was able to find the S. So they were okay. But there was not a way for me, so as far as I know, to um, download that font. Um, I've downloaded numerous fonts like Black Adder font. There was something called ITC Lubalin. I think that's what that is. And a very, very, um, uh, it's a very PBS font um, for their PBS logo. So I used that. Um, so I had to create my own S for Henry S, and I basically used this other part of the B right here. So if we can get to that right now, so we go to the old vintage paint here. Um, it's very easy to get for your computer here. Um, I guess I have two. Um, there was one I was editing there, so let's close that uh, paint. And there's this one here. Now, I had to do a screen capture of this one particular one here. I didn't have the colors that I wanted for this one. Um, oops. That, we don't go to that one here. So essentially what I did, let's start off with the first one here. So this one here, the zooming part of it. So here's mine. If you, Hopefully we'll be able to see this from this particular vantage point. I may need to raise the, uh, here let's just raise the, um, the stand here very quickly here. Um, just, oops, I don't want to use that here. Let's grab something we can kind of raise a stand with here, so we'll just do this here. Hopefully we'll be able to see this. Again, I said the editing on this is not going to be perfect here. Um, so there's mine right now in the editing process here. And so for like the, um, let's go to the media here. 
And so here is this one. Here is the graphic for this one here. Oops. This one right here. So again, I had to cut and paste through paint. And then um, you see it's really dark right here, the shadowing right here. Hopefully you can see that. Essentially, that's from this side on this side over here, or on this one here. It got darker over here, but it didn't have that great contrast. So what I do, um, once I get it out of paint here, so we go to paint. That's not paint. Here it is. We go to paint here, and then um, we get this all... Uh, um, edited here. This is a different color here, but yeah, I edited in paint. And then I take my graphic out to this one here. This is the old JASC Jask Paint Shop Pro. Now this has a very great blurring feature in here. I love this for the blurring feature, and that's almost exclusively what I used it for. I found it on an old hard drive, and I was able to save it and put it onto a uh, uh, you know, a temporary device and put it onto my computer and that has really saved me a ton of work. Now this one, of course, I didn't blur out everything. I probably should have a little bit in this particular area right up in here in that area. Again, it was just a test logo to see how well I could do. I might just leave it. We shall see. But I want my logos to look like they were created years ago. And so there, there's always a way of doing something like that. I could theoretically take my Hanna-Barbera logo here um, and blur it some more so I can always cut and paste and copy it again. Now how did I get that f the, the music file to my computer? That's one of the more difficult things here. I used to have something on YouTube here, if we can get to it here. I think it's probably still in the junk here. Yeah, see, I have something called a video download helper. That doesn't work very well. It had a watermark half the time, and it just was, was flaky. So sometimes a file would be downloaded, but there would be no sound. Sometimes it would be sound only. Um, so a workaround to that is this thing called FreeCam. And FreeCam basically you can start, it doesn't have its perfections here sometimes, but I just do new recording. Are you sure we want to close the window and start a new one? Yes, we click yes here if we wanted to do that. I don't know what I have here, but usually I save the file. Um, and then so then I, you can do some video editing in here, but I use the video, I use the photo stage uh, slideshow professional by NCH software. I think it's about $65. They usually sometimes run a promotion or they have in the past for 10 or 15, 20 dollars off. Um, so initially it's, it's expensive, but it's paid for itself time and again because it's an easy um, slideshow editing program. And um, so then I import my graphics in here. And the reason, the, how I was able to get the zooming effect here, you know, I did this zoom here. And then to the set. So all it was essentially, without the zoom, it was two images such as this. And I was not able to get this particular one here. So what I did is if we go to the effects here, and then we go to the edit. So we want to, we want to do some sort of color. Um, oh, actually, well, I know what I did here. I did a, see, I did a basically a two-tone. See, so the original here, this is essentially two-tone. This is black. And this is orange, you know, Halloween colors. Okay, so there's this one here. So it's essentially two colors. So I went to two tone, you know. So I went to two tone. And then I clicked on the colors I wanted for two tone. And it's basically like going to paint. And you got the old palette there. And you can edit your old colors and what have you. And so that's very fun to do. So I was able to make that two tone for that one. Oops. Here, let's get out of this. Let's get out of that. Don't want to mess that one up there. So we did not want to black and white that one. And then the Henry S. production, I uh, basically found out where Hanna-Barbera stuck the Hanna-Barbera right in here approximately. And then production was about right there. And then um, I found a font very similar to that. Um, there are people that have Hanna-Barbera tribute uh, so they make their own logos very similar to this using whatever tools that they can find on the web. And it's a very popular thing to do, make tribute logos of almost the exact same. See how somebody can do that. You always have to be careful and make sure that somebody didn't, you know, uh, borrow the entire logo and set a remake and then they did the whole thing of verbatim. One of the things you will find, especially with the Hanna-Barbera logo, is you'll find all kinds of degraded logos all the way through YouTube. So the degraded logos essentially are like different variations. Some of of them are transferred direct from film that uh, has been corrupted so the color quality has gone bad 
Some of them are like VCR transfers. Some of them are like transfers like through these little things you can buy through Amazon. And they have degraded over time so they have bad effects. Sometimes people are, are just filming YouTube from the TV or some sort of VCR tape that they have. And so that quality gets even more screwed up and they all end up in logo compilations as variants or differences. But it turns out it's all operator error essentially. Somebody screwed up there. Um, but how I got this here, this little zooming effect here, I did that. Well, see, there's a uh, in the effects. There's a zoom feature. I'm sorry, the effects, the animations. There's a zoom feature, and see. So what? Oh, yeah. No, I know. I know. Okay, here. No, no. I got it. 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 So okay, here we want to click on zoom here. And basically, what I did was I did the end point to the the beginning. I set it at the smallest they could have, and then I just had it to the biggest that they can have. And that's what happened. And that's how I got my. And then again, um, back to this here, I essentially just um, found the font there and cropped it and I just did a flip, you know, I just did a horizontal flip for that and that, oops, get back to this here, I did a horizontal flip for this here. It's not perfect, but again, these are the basics of how I create my logos. There's a few steps that I probably missed in there, but we want to go back to Irfan view. Again, let's see if we can just find a, a graphic here. We can, imp oh, we're already open here, find a graphic I can open here. So we go to open, we'll just find something here, we'll just go to pictures, okay, well we'll just see, okay, we'll just start off our, with one of our favorite buddies here, Jason Sudeikis, what's up with that, ooh, what's up with that, what's up, no I'm kidding, <laughs> What's up with that? Um, so we just do that here. And then you can do a little bit of editing through here too. You edit. You can you can uh, paste. You can copy. But I see I could take this picture um, through any of my other programs and put it in the clipboard. And this takes anything in your clipboard and you can put it in here. And then if you have problems saving anything um, through another program, this will save it as a JPEG or BMP file. This is a great way to avoid a lot of um, junk, you know. It's a great time saver. Um, I Dad recommended this to me and he was always finding you know cheap and free programs that cost nothing. He always worked his way around Microsoft and so that was just an amazing amazing thing that he did back in the uh, 90s and uh, mid 2000s. Um, but anyway what we want to do is we can do um, do other things in here. We can edit this a little bit here. We can rotate. We can resize, resample, um, negative so what's up with that? And then we can you, we can always undo it, of course. Edit, undo, and then we go to options here. Oh, it's not options. Let's see. What do we mess around here? Swap colors. See there. Now we've changed it, you know. And then you can always go into another program and change the hue and stuff, and you can make him look a little more Christmassy than he normally is. You know, give him a beard, and I don't know, it's just all that fun stuff. Well, not really give him a. But anyway, so there is that one there. And then we get out of this one here, go back a little bit further here. Uh, this may not be exciting for everybody, but again, this is how I... Now, again, how I got the music for this here is I did that... Um, I, I did. I went back to this here. Um, this is the untitled free, free cam right here. So I was able to... Let's see. Uh, let's see. Open, open. Oops. So we just want to go to, um, let's see, was it screenshots? No, it was, there's a folder for this stuff here. Well, anyway, we're not going to worry about that one. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do new recording here. Yes. So we want to do a new recording here, and it shows the window here, and then you go up and down to sizing how, and then you go to Windows. I mean, yeah, we go to Windows, but we want to go back to the YouTube here. I've done this already before, but we just want to bring the lines further down here. You always have to be careful because this here gets in the recording area here sometimes. So you have to maybe do the video once or twice here. And then you can always uh, do this. But in the editing program, you can always crop out the edges more so if you wanted to. So we hit the record button. And sometimes you can uh, play before that or record after. But let's go back to the start here. And then we do this. Now sometimes they will have a little glitch here, but we'll hit the done button. These show other people and things that I've sort of watched here. Um, so there's that. And then what we want to do, see now that has popped up in my little editor here. 
and then we can either edit it, which we don't want to do today, but uh, that just shows you the edit and the cutting process. I haven't learned how to do that, um, and then we need to get back out of the editing here. This will probably take us out of the program here, but anyway, we can just go and save this. So we just save, uh, close, that closed the editor there, that's good. So then we can just basically save this from here, and then I can use this however I want. Now, when I, when I say I can get the music here, what I do here is I go to this particular file here, and then if I go to media here, this is the particular, uh, no, that's not one, but this is a different fo the file here. So well, this is like a, um, showing different uh, Hanna-Barbera stuff at the end of it. Um, there's a different one, but somebody has put their watermark in the corner here. And then what I do is I just go to the point that I want, so I cut and paint, or cut to the point that I want, and cut here and here, here, and and then what I do is I click this, and I do unlink sound clip, and then I bring the sound clip over to where I want. I have to move it over, and then I can delete this folder here, and then, oops. So there's my sound file there, but unfortunately, you know, when the sound files, every time you add a new graphic here, you put um, the file in danger of being moved farther back. So we'll put a folder in there, we'll put or a file and a picture in there. We'll just use this one again here, just for the heck of it, and another one. And then again, what happens is that this this file sometimes moves wherever the previous graphic was. So this was had the, the Hanna-Barbera music at the end of it, and that's now back over this way and this, and you have, to, so sometimes a, uh, a music will be floating like, shoved way back over off the screen, and I will not be able to see that, and that's why you'll get like a 10 minute video from me, and um, instead of a five minute video, because there's a bunch of black space until there's music at the way end. Ed Wesker Griff usually collect, uh, he, um, catches that one for me. It's like, oh wow, that's kind of funky to do that. But again, it's my program doing that and it's not me. Um, it's just things that I miss because again, I can scroll as far as the eye can see here. See, there's a file that just end up way back here. So let's click on this one here. But you see, now this file is devoid of any kind of logos or graphics. So that's how I can set any type of music that I want. And that's what I do with my PBS logos here. Uh, we're just about done here. Um, I'll just show you. So what we want to do um, is I want to save this file. So file, save project file. Because I don't need that um, jingle at the end there. So we'll just save that. Uh, say now now this is saved as a project but uh, unfortunately with this program you can't put a project into another project if that makes sense so you gotta open up a new project so whatever I do with this one here I have to keep this Hanna-Barbera logo here and then I have to just create a new logo or import something and try to figure out because uh, a lot of the logos that I, I have I can recreate them relatively quickly with about a three or four step process there's probably easier ways of doing this sort of thing here but this is how I have to do it. Let's just go to, um, let's get out of add media. But that just gives you an idea of files that you can add to it here. We just, we're going to want to go to open project. Shows me the different projects here. Now these will take forever to load here. But some of them will be like, um, have titles like endpoint. And then um, um, there's my Foresight Saga um, uh, video there that I did a while back ago. And there's a group do W1 um, logo. That's um, the uh, not worth point. Um, it's Westinghouse, I believe. Um, that's what W is for. Um, they had a group W cable back in the day. I think it's Westinghouse. Um, but there's KCOPB. Um, so that's Casey Cowan talking from OPB. But a lot of these will be you know things that um, um, like new PBS, um, Reicher, Risher. Um, I had a really cool Henry Risher logo there. It's pretty cool. There's some WGN intro, you know. So some of those will save me some time if I can go back to them. Unfortunately, a lot of these were saved with a bunch of extra files that don't exist anymore. And that's one of the bad things about programs is that when they're searching for, oops, we have got the sound zoomed up here. Searching for files, um, it's trying to look for the file in that previous folder. And if you moved something, deleted something, then you're 
um, stuff is kind of corrupt. So you got to pick and choose what you want to save and what you don't want to save. It's very difficult there. Um, but essentially, let's let's get to uh, let's do the preview here. So it's not perfect, and it's not meant to be perfect, but it's, you know, those people who were born in the 1970s or saw reruns back on Cartoon Network back in the day, they might have gotten the old Hanna-Barbera logo. And I just think it's kind of a fun tribute that I wanted to add to my channel. I won't use this every single time, you know, it took me an awful long time to figure it out. And the graphic's not even perfect here. There's a little jog right here. But again, this is all film. And I forget what font this was. It was something like Y-U-L. And it was all in lowercase there. I couldn't get it exactly because Hanna-Barbera um, stretched a lot longer than Henry S. And the production. And they had some sort of Taft logo down here. Corporation and all kinds of whatever. I wasn't able to um, get this uh, font here to match the graphic here. It's a little on the... Um, um, it's a little on the, I think I was able to blur it a little bit in this program here, um, but normally I would go back to that old JASC uh, paint shop here. Uh, wrong program. Um, this one right here. Um, and then I would be able to do the blurring effect here. So I could do a Gaussian blur, or I could go to effects, and I could go to blur, and I go to average blur, blur more, Gaussian blur, motion blur, soften, and soften more. So I could do all these different types of blurs there and make it look like it was old videotape or film. And that's really what I like doing because a lot of the logos that I see created are just a little on the too crisp side. So that's essentially how I create a logo for my channel. Um, if anybody has any questions, post them down below. Anybody has any um, questions on how to get those programs, the best thing to do is I always say Google it. Um, Irfan View does not cost a cent as far as I know. Um, the uh, the editing program, uh, the film editing program, slideshow editor, that costs dollars as far as I know. There might be a free download that you can use for a while with limited features. I think there was one at one time, but you weren't able to save your projects. I'm not 100% sure about that one. And then um, the uh, JASC Paint Shop Pro, that's probably from the early 2000s or the 90s. I really don't know how old that is. It's, I'm not sure if that is um, available anywhere, but it was an old Windows, I don't, it could even have been a Windows 98 program. I am not 100% sure on that one there. And then, um, of course, Paint um, did not come on a lot of Windows, but you're able to, I think you're able to download the old Paint program uh, for free somewhere, and then uh, Paint app or whatever you want to call it, and put that onto your computer. Because, I will say, the Paint 3D, it was so hard to maneuver um, just some of the very basic graphics. It was basically trying to do too much at once, is, is my take on that one. It was really unfun to use that here. Oh, I'm in, I'm sorry, in the wrong program here. I want to go to Paint. Some of these logos look very similar here. Oh, actually, I'm in the right. I'm in the right. It just looked different here. And I could just cut away whatever I want. Doom. Doom, that sort of thing. So there is that one. Um, but yes, I basically took the entire screen capture and imported it into here, and that's how I got this one here. And then I was able to get that to the... Um, well, anyway, that is what I have for you today. Let me, again, let me know... Um, anything because I sure don't get a lot of feedback. A lot of people say great video, good job, nice card, you know, I enjoyed it, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I don't get a, a ton of feedback on some of the stuff here, which is kind of, because I need, I, I always want to know how to improve my channel. Even if it's something as dumb as like me already knowing the answer, um, which sometimes actually does happen. Somebody uh, commented something about, you do know this is this, and I said, oh yes, I've known that forever. It's just that I didn't want to talk about something in another video that would take too long uh, to explain, which I'm doing right now. So, thank you for watching.